The last speaker today is John Hilly. He's very active in the Glasgow Campaign for Palestinian Human Rights and he's an intelligent commentator on what's happening there through his blog. John Hilly. Thank you. Um, not so very long ago, many, many of us stood here to support the people of Gaza as they were being massacred. 1,400 people in excess of. The whole place devastated. And we stood here in support of them. The world did. That was a pivotal moment. After that, Judge Richard Goldstone was tasked by the UN to go and investigate what, what had happened there. And his overriding conclusion was that Israel was guilty of war crimes, or should be indicted for war crimes. That was a pivotal moment. One of the other things that we should remember about that massacre, that atrocity, was the lies and distortion that came through the Hasbara medium, the Israeli uh, exercise in propaganda, which tried to claim that this was an assault on Hamas. It wasn't. It was a concerted, systematic assault on the entire Palestinian people. And the message that they were trying deliberately to send out there was we're going to terrify you people into submission. That was a pivotal moment and we should bear that in mind because a very similar thing has happened here. Another pivotal moment. With Israel sending out the message quite deliberately after the cabinet meeting and their decision to go and intercept this, this flotilla that they were going to stop this by force, deliberately by force. They've been in overdrive trying to tell people that this is not a humanitarian flotilla, that this was um, captured by Hamas and various other terrorist extremists. We know that it's a, it's a lie. The real problem here is that we're not getting the message out from the media. Um, up until at least Saturday, myself and a number of people had, had lobbied the BBC, where is this story about the flotilla? The story had been building, had been covered by other international media, nothing on the BBC, nothing until it actually happens. And when it does actually happen, when the brutality does take place, all we get is skewed propaganda and as one of the one or two of the, the previous speakers have said, a complete echo chamber uh, from the BBC repeating almost verbatim what uh, the Israeli propaganda forces are saying. And we also have the fact that this is a Turkish, a Turkish vessel sailing legally in international waters, flying a Turkish flag. Craig Murray said this morning, and he knows a bit about these things, that what they have done is effectively a declaration of war. Um, and that, that Turkey, amongst others, has got the legitimate right to respond to this. The question now is, what will our political elite do, if anything? I, you know, well, I've written to Nick Clegg this morning, I've written to the BBC, many people have written to their MPs, and it's important that we do that and we keep up the pressure. But we really have to intensify the things that we can do here in terms of the boycott, in terms of boycotting is really good, that's the practical things that we can do. And from that, the campaign will grow, I'm quite sure. So this is fantastic, keep up the good work. It's great to see people out in such fantastic numbers. They've got nothing left but violence. This is what we have to bear in mind. They're out of ideas. And part of the agenda here is not only to stop the convoy, it's to, it's to defeat any possibility of a, of a just peace because they've got no interest in sitting down at the peace table. They've got nothing left but violence. And the world is coming to see that day by day in every one of their actions. Thank you. Thank you, John. The last speaker is, Angel is Angela McCormick from Stop the War Coalition. Palestine is central to the, to the campaign to crush people across the whole of the Middle East and make them kiss the whip and, and bend the knee to the great power. Palestine's part of a much bigger picture, and it's a key part. Angela McCormick from Stop the War. Thanks, Nick. Um, I just want to, you know, thank everybody that's here today, and 
for the speeches and the comments that people have made. We stand here together in solidarity with the people of Palestine and Gaza, and we stand here today bearing witness to the day that someone has described as pivotal, as the day that the unbelievable, the unbelievable has become sadly too believable. Because Israel has proved yet again that it is a state of terror, that it is a criminal state, that it is a murderous state, that is not content a year of blockade of land, not content by killing pregnant women at checkpoints, not content by military denial of medicine and food and the basic necessities of life, not content. Today I shall prove that the unbelievable has to be believed. And I think we stand today to say that they are left with violence. Uh, look, look, look round, look behind you. Look at the numbers of people that are here. Think of the thousands that are marching, practically at hours notice in London. Think of the tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands marching around the world. Think of the states where they're denied the right to march, where they will march in spite of the threat of military. And think what we can do over the next few days and next few weeks to bring Israel's crime to be punished. They cannot go unpunished. And we need to point the finger at our government. And I agree wholeheartedly that the time for words and condemnation and the wringing of the hands has ended. You will only be proved to be a leader for justice, for democracy, by what you do. And we need to make sure that our movement over the coming days points the fingers at our leaders, be they Clegg, be they Cameron, be they in Scotland, Sam and our government. What are you going to do? That should be our question. We know what we're going to do. We know what we're going to do. When we write to our MPs, our MSPs, we're going to march in greater numbers. So what I would say to you today is tell people the numbers that were here. Tell people who was here, despite the propaganda, despite the media lies. Israel are liars. The Israeli state has committed a criminal act, a murderous act, a terrorist act on the people of Gaza today. And we are going to stand and bear witness to that. On Saturday, we're going to be marching nationally in Edinburgh. And somebody's just whispered to me that they've collected already the new people, us people here today, £500 towards the cost of those coaches. So let's get there on Saturday. We're meeting here at 12 o'clock. We're going to the mound for 2 o'clock. And we need to be there in the numbers that are needed to call Israel to account, to demand that all diplomatic relations are called off, ended. All diplomats are expelled. All diplomats are broken back. Sanctions are brought to bear. The boycott is deepened. And something is burned down. Free, free Palestine. get even. We have to demand of Alex Salmond that this become a no-go area for anything connected with the Israeli state. Whether that's a war criminal. I'm finished by saying this, I've just been found not guilty on a charge of racism. And I hope you're not addressed too often by people charged with racism. But it was a racism of boycott and support for Palestine and there was yet another attempt by the British state to criminalise decent people like you and make it impossible to come to the aid of our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Well, we are going to come to their aid. We are going to come to their aid on Saturday. In numbers, we are going to bring our relatives. Oh, please, please, don't just get angry today. Let's get even. I hope you'll all come to Edinburgh on Saturday to demand that Alex Salmon break any links, makes it impossible for the Israelis to come to the parliament again and shake hands with anybody. So friends, this gets filed under success, but a very limited and a very partial success. We have to go forward, we have to defeat the Zionists, and we have to struggle for the liberation of Palestine. Let's go forward.